I want you to listen to this scene. Pay close attention to the music. If you've seen the show, you know this is a very important moment, but I think the music itself is telling a story, and that's what I want to talk about here. The music for ReZero was written by Kenichiro Suehiro. Now, I'm not going to talk about whether or not I think his music is good. For the record, I think his work on the show is amazing, but that's not what I want to focus on. I'm also not going to talk about how his music was used either. For one thing, that's mostly up to the director. And as far as I can tell, Suehiro didn't write any of his soundtrack with a particular scene in mind. What I want to do is talk about why Suehiro may have selected the sounds he did to represent this story. The song in the scene earlier is called Hymn of Despair and Atonement, and even out of context, to me it brings to mind something very specific. But how can you create music, especially without words, that portrays an idea? Let's talk a little bit about music theory. If you don't know anything about it, here are some basics. The fundamental building blocks of most music are notes, sound waves vibrating at a specific frequency or pitch. Notes with different pitches are given different names. And while there are technically an infinite amount of notes, there are only 12 distinct ones available for a musician to use, A through G with a couple extra ones in between. If you play these notes in a certain sequence, what you get is something called a scale. There are specific patterns that these sequences can follow that I'm not gonna get into, but there are two that you need to know about here, major and minor. If you start on a specific note and play the next notes according to one of these patterns, you get a specific scale. For example, if you start on C and play the next notes according to the major pattern, you get a C major scale. If you start on F and play according to the minor pattern, you get an F minor scale. Now what I'm about to say next is very, very oversimplified, but if you were to write a song using only the notes available in a specific scale, that would help to determine what's called the song's key. So if you were to write a song using only the notes in the G major, Major scale, there's a good chance that the key of that song is G major. To be clear, it's more complicated than that, but just so that I don't have to explain things like what a tonic is, that's all you really need to know for now. But with these building blocks, musicians can portray some basic ideas, because the key of a song can invoke certain emotions. If I take a scene out of context and add music like this, it feels cathartic, something good. But if I take the same scene and play this instead, it feels tragic, as if something terrible has just happened. While both scenes feel a bit sad, to me the second feels like a substantially worse situation, just because of the music. But the only difference between the two songs I played was the key. To get from one version to the other, all I did was switch out certain notes in one key with their equivalent in another. The first song is in C major, the second in C minor. If you've ever noticed that a song sounds happy, that's usually because it's in a major key. If it sounds sad, it's usually in a minor key. Why this is has to do with some of the more technical aspects of certain keys and psychology. And honestly, it's not always true either, but it's a fairly good rule of thumb. The key of Hymn of Despair and Atonement, as far as I can tell at least, is G minor. So just by its construction, the song already has some emotions built into it. It feels somewhat ominous and sad just through the key alone. That is not very interesting. It's a pretty shallow observation to be honest. Most music you'll come across is written in a certain key, so you can say something along these lines for pretty much any song, and sadness is a fairly broad emotion. To me, Hymn of Despair and Atonement brings to mind something very specific, and while its key supports the idea I have, I think there's something else going on. Music theory is useful in letting composers know what might sound good, things like what chords will sound good next to others, and how to have the 
music makes sense. But just like how having an extensive knowledge of grammar won't give you the ability to write a good novel, knowledge of music theory alone isn't enough to make a compelling song. It's extremely difficult to come up with anything original in music. So a lot of the time, musicians will draw on various artists to give them inspiration. One of Suehiro's idols is the late Ennio Morricone, and I think you can hear that influence in songs like Call of the Witch. I think it shares some DNA with the main theme of the good, the bad, and the ugly, written by Morricone. Sometimes, there's no other reason for this besides the musician thinking a certain thing sounds good, which is what I think is going on here. But other times, other songs can portray a feeling that seems appropriate for a given situation, and that might be something worth pulling from. For ReZero, director Masaharu Watanabe pointed to Hans Zimmer's work on The Dark Knight as a template for the kind of suspense he was looking for, which Suehiro tapped into. But there are certain songs that hold a specific meaning because of the way they've been used throughout history and culture. When a composer wants to portray a specific idea, they will usually draw from these songs as a way to send that message. And for musicians, there is one song that holds the most power in that regard. This is the Dies Irae and it's one of the most famous songs in all of music scoring. It's an ancient Gregorian hymn that describes the Day of Wrath, and was primarily sung in Catholic funeral masses, at least before the mid-20th century. Because of this, it's the song that's most closely tied to the idea of death. Outside of church contexts, it's been used to represent death in everything. You can find videos of it being incorporated in a lot of movie soundtracks. With that in mind, let's get back to Suehiro. If we compare the Dia to him of Despair and Atonement, it's pretty easy to hear that these two songs sound absolutely nothing alike. But there is a point to why I bring this up. If you've listened to a lot of movie soundtracks, using the Dies Irae to represent death is a fun fact you might have already known about. But there's actually kind of a misconception about that song. While most people know it as the Dies Irae, that's not the full story, because the most important part of the Dies Irae are the words. The Latin that forms the lyrics to this hymn are a poem. And while most people only know that poem through this melody, that's not the only way it can be sung or played. Like I said earlier, the hymn was primarily sung in Catholic funeral masses. That mass has a specific name, a requiem. The requiem mass has distinct parts, each usually with their own music. But that music isn't always set, and it could be changed. Writing music for this mass later became somewhat removed from the mass itself, and some began to see the music as its own work. Music made in this tradition eventually took on the name of the mass it was supposed to accompany. The Requiem. Thousands of requiems have been made by various composers throughout history, either to be played during the Requiem Mass or as its own thing. Most of them have a section for things like the Kyrie and Sanctus, among other things. But more importantly for this discussion, some had a section for the Dies Irae, which was part of the Sequentia. Mozart's Requiem, written in 1791, is probably the most famous Requiem of all, and his Dies Irae sounds completely different than the one most people are familiar with. Although so you've probably heard this version as well. But if we want to get to what I think may have inspired Suehiro, we'll need to look at what could be considered to be the second most famous Requiem by Giuseppe Verdi. Completed in 1874, Verdi's Requiem contains a version of the Dies Irae that is just as iconic as Mozart's and the traditional Gregorian chant. For reference, this is Hymn of Despair and Atonement by Kenichiro Suehiro. And this is the Dies Irae, as written by Giuseppe Verdi.
In both motifs, they start high and descend before breaking the downward motion to end the phrase. They are very similar. They're in the same key as far as I can tell, follow a similar motion, and I mean, these beginning notes are exactly the same. To me, it seems like Suehiro is pulling directly from this version of the Diaside. A similar sounding motif can also be heard in a song called Rondo of Love and Darkness, the main theme of the show. But while they start on the same note and the general motion is similar, the connection isn't quite as strong. In an interview, Suehiro said that he wanted his music to elevate the story from below. And by using the sounds he does, he's able to highlight the themes and ideas present in the show. When I hear this song played throughout the series, by having the Diaside infused into the soundtrack in songs like Hymn of Despair and Atonement, I get a strong sense of the idea that I think Suehiro was trying to present. In this story, Subaru is surrounded by death. I will admit though, this is mostly speculation on my part, so I want to make a couple of things clear. First, I cannot know what was going through Suehiro's head while he was writing any of this. There is no information I could find about his process when writing this song, so at most, I can only guess. And second, these are not things you need to know to appreciate the music, because most people don't know these things, and that's perfectly fine. Even though to me this little piece of trivia enhances the themes of the show and appears very deliberate, for all I know, this might just be a coincidence, and Suehiro could have just wrote something that he he thought sounded neat. But even if that's what happened, it's a pretty neat coincidence to have. Thank you for watching. This was something I wanted to talk about in my other ReZero video, but couldn't quite fit in. The song also happens to be the main theme for Petal Juice, which is pretty cool, and that's how I will say that name. I really appreciate the support I've gotten over the past couple of months. I went from around 30 to over 7,000 subscribers in that time, which is absolutely insane to me. It takes a while for me to make these things though, so I'm really grateful for each and every one of you.